Well, greetings to you, Paul, and congratulations from all of us here at Focus on the Family. You know, there is no way to put into words my appreciation to you for all that you have done to promote and instruct the conservative Christian movement. You've had a profound impact on my life. Beginning in 1980, when we met, I brought a primitive tape recorder to your office for an interview on the subject, A Christian Perspective on Government. I wonder if you remember that. Focus aired that 28 years ago. Thank you for never wavering, Paul, on morality and conservative principles. God's blessings to you and Joyce. Paul, we're indebted to you for your years of service. You've stood strong and our country is better because of it. You've continued on in spite of personal obstacles which you've had to overcome. Your dedication and commitment has served as an inspiration for many. We honor you and thank you. May your tribe increase. Paul Weirich has been a pillar in the modern day conservative movement. He has done a lot that we should all be proud of. Paul Weirich has been a man of vision, a man of organization, a man of action. Paul, best wishes to you. I know you've faced a lot of adversity in your life, You've done it with courage and with character, and I consider it an honor to be your friend. Paul, over the last three decades, you've been right on every major issue. You fought for lower taxes and smaller government. You defended the idea that America needed to confront evil, whether it was Soviet communism or today Islamo-fascism. And on the values issues, my friend, at a time when moral relativism was reigning supreme, you stood for the sanctity of life and for marriage between a man and a woman. My friend, I am absolutely convinced because of your efforts, America is more likely in the years ahead to be that shining city upon a hill that our founders tried to give us and that Ronald Reagan constantly reminded us of. Paul, it's been an honor to be your friend and your ally, and I hope we'll be able to do it for many years to come. Paul has been a force for truth uh, in our American culture and the public square. He has realized that God is central to the life of our nation and the individual is primary, not the state. He has been a force for freedom and he has constantly fought to liberate us from the shackles of big government and the shackles of self-doubt as individuals and as a nation. Paul, you have set a shining example for all of us to follow. You have been the North Star of the conservative movement in our modern society. When I think of Paul Weirich, I think of uh, courage. I think of tenacity. I think of one who has selflessly shaped the conservative movement. Since arriving at the Family Research Council five years ago, uh, Paul has become a uh, trusted friend, an ally, and an encourager. He has helped me navigate not only the streets of this sometimes unforgiving city, but he has also helped me find my way through the conservative network that's also known as the vast right-wing conspiracy. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses uh, 12 and 13 in part read this way, it says, We urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you. Esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Well, Paul, tonight we recognize you for your faithful work. And I greatly appreciate your friendship and greatly admire you for your years of selfless leadership to the calls of faith, family, and freedom. Paul Weirich, who has overcome difficulties with his health so brilliantly, has set a new standard in courage and dedication to his mission concerning the future of this country. He has stayed the course. Paul still remains a force in the political and cultural stream of America. To adhere to the principles of the Founding Fathers, I have known Paul Weirich since 1968, 40 years. His impact on the conservative movement has been huge, but let's not forget the impact Paul has had on the whole fabric 
of American opinion. So to you, Paul, I say, stay with it. The country needs you. Here we are in Washington, D.C. D.C., that's District of Confusion, which applies not only to the local government, but in large measure to the federal government. There are so many bases for tribute to Paul Michael Weirich. Let me just pick two of them substantively and apply them. Paul unquestionably is an expert on the functioning of the government in Washington, complicated area that it is. He also is extremely knowledgeable about transportation and particularly railroad transportation and light rail transportation. Combining those two substantive areas, he has the ability to speak with conviction, concisely, clearly, directly. So on those bases, he is entitled to much tribute, as well, of course, as to many, many other bases that other people will cover, or that if I were filibustering instead of being allowed a couple of minutes, I could cover. A tribute to you, Paul. Someone once said that the history of philosophy is nothing but a series of footnotes to Plato. Well, the last 40 years of Washington politics is, in a sense, a series of footnotes to Paul Weyrich. Paul has made the running in our politics. He's been on the front lines of the culture wars, as well he should be, because he started a number of the skirmishes in those wars. And Paul will be there to finish them. It takes a while, but in the end, the good guys usually win in this time, and Paul Weyrich is one of the good guys. I came to Washington in 1970 to work on the staff of a senator of whom I had not heard six months earlier, Gordon Allen of Colorado. The other Colorado senator at the time was Pete Dominic. His press secretary was Brian Lamb. Allen's press secretary, of course, was Paul Weyrich. We worked together in what is now called the Dirksen Building, and that is interesting to me for two reasons. First, it was Dirksen's death that caused the Republicans to rearrange their leadership and elect Gordon Allen chairman of the Policy Committee. But also, Dirksen bore no resemblance whatever to Paul Weyrich. Dirksen once said, I stick to my principles, and one of my principles is flexibility. Flexibility is not, I think, in Paul Weyrich's vocabulary. Paul understood long before most people did the truth of this axiom. The culture of a society, more than the politics of the society, determine the success of that society. And if you're not careful, the politics of the society will have a deleterious effect on the culture. Paul, I remember very well May 1972 when my first child, John, was born. He was born with Down syndrome. He's now 36 and doing fine. You took me to lunch in the Senate dining room and said uh, there is a tradition within uh, the Christian religion that says that uh, people like John are as angels in that they do not know sin. Uh, the more I've gotten to know John, the more I have come to understand, uh, A, your wisdom in saying that, and B, to appreciate your kindness in saying it then. Thank you.